Hello and welcome to another VOD review. This time we have the most important VOD, okay? This is a story about love and loss. This is a story about never giving up on your dreams. This is a story about persistence. Of course, I'm talking about Jimmy. The Lord and Savior of the Guangzhou Charge and of my heart. Jimmy has had his struggles throughout his career in the league. You know, we, we saw some questionable things from Jimmy, ow, from Jimmy uh, in the past. You know, where my, some of those flanks on Dorado, they still haunt me in my dreams when he played for the, uh, for the Chengdu Hunters. But today, we saw Jimmy go up against one of the goats in Carpe, and Jimmy laid down his flag. We're going to get Jimmy Pov, okay? That's what we're watching. Nobody else matters in this match, only Jimmy. He gets his first picks and he does his jobs as we're going to watch the Guangzhou Charge beat the Philadelphia Fusion. You know, Philly, I don't actually dislike you guys. I, I, I'm sorry I watch every single loss of you guys. But in my defense, it's not my fault. Uh, you guys just seem to lose in the most glorious fashions and it makes it really interesting to watch. So, let's get into it. Have you ever talked to Jimmy? No. Oh, we follow each other on Twitter though, so we're kind of like best friends. Okay, Jimmy, please. Let the fucking begin. It's hashtag Jimmyable is the new hashtag going around. Let's go, Jimmy. We're in this together. All of us. All right, so Zess pulled out the Farah. We actually saw a lot of teams try and play this Farah this weekend. I feel like more people are trying to play it, like especially on maps like this Nepal map, because you can just like spam the choke and do a ton of damage. But when you have Jimmy on your team, it doesn't mean anything. Oh, it's just the beginning, chat. You think that you think that was it? It is just the beginning. Why is Philly playing Carpe over MN3? It's a good question, right? And a lot of people have had that question of like, yeah, like Carpe, oh wow, Carpe dip. Um, we, we all know like Carpe is a great player in the past, but I, we're all surprised that they're playing him consistently over MN3 in a meta that I feel like MN3 would be really good at. You know, we, it seems like maybe they like Carpe Sojin over the, uh, Maybe they prefer Carpe Sojin compared to MN3 Sojin. Uh, we haven't seen MN3 play too much Sojin. Like, he's obviously popped off the most on the Ash. Um, but even then, you know, obviously it's a big pain point because Philadelphia Fusion aren't doing that well. Carpe himself isn't playing that well. So would they be better off with MN3? And it's hard to speak of why they're not playing MN3 over Carpe. But, you know, it is what it is. It's actually crazy how much Jimmy leveled up over the winter. Good on him. Dude grinds. And that, and that's the funny thing. It's like, obviously, Jimmy was a lot of a meme in my channel for a long time. Not because of, like, top-tier performances, just because of some, honestly, really subpar performances. He's, he was historically a very inconsistent player. Um, but it feels like, you know, he, ever since he rejoined the charge and he's been playing this thing, he's been a consistent good piece for the charge. Uh, and he's playing over someone of the caliber of a Pritter as well. So... Um, it's kind of crazy to see him get that level of, uh, growth, and I hope we get to see him more. Jimmy's been kind of getting owned. Other than those first two picks, he's been kind of getting owned, though, so we're not going to talk about that. I feel bad for Zest? Yeah. Z Zest is by far the most consistent piece on this, uh, fusion squad right now. Honestly, even Fury on the Junker Queen hasn't been that impressive. You know, like, Fury and Carpe seem to be in the very similar boat in which they're both great players historically in the league, and it just feels like maybe we have these unrealistically high expectations for them both. Uh, but yeah. Xerneas takes down Carpe. Xerneas going crazy. Oh, 
I'd say Fix has been solid this entire year so far. Yeah, well, yeah, Fix has been fine. Like, honestly, Fixer and Aim God, they've both been fine this year. Like, they haven't been standouts in my eyes, but they've both been solid. But Zest is, uh, in my opinion, the person and, and the player who is leading Zest to success. Or like, uh, sorry, leading the, uh, the fusion to success. Zest is just, like, his aggressive prowess, like, yeah, definitely gets punished for it sometimes. And uh, you're going to see that in this match where his aggression gets him punished. But it, it also sort of opens up the, uh, the game for him. That's a good ult by Fury. Fuzzy duck, does he fuck? Does he fuck? Fuck he does. <laughs> Fedavito, thank you for the five months. Well, Philly get the first point. Oh, sorry, I was I just realized I was I was reading chat. But yeah, Philly, Philly get the first point. 99. Get the cap. Oh actually I gotta change the uh Overtime. It's good. Chargers having to come in. Honestly, the Chargers got uh got picked like a lot. Like their their old cycles just weren't great. Got pushed apart, Carpe got the better of them, and Zest went kinda fucking crazy. So Philly is Zest and friends, Washington is Decay and friends. Makes sense to me, yeah, honestly. It's not bad to have a DPS player, like be, put all your resources and then be a linchpin, but it's it's important to have other pieces as well. We're in this Can you explain to me what, uh, make me understand why Hanzo is not good instead of Sojin? Because Hanzo is too random. He, his, his shot is a projectile, so it's very inconsistent getting headshots, while the Sojin rail is a hit scan. Plus, the uh, Sojin uh, field that you're seeing here is a great uh, zone controlling uh, ability where it does damage and slows people. In a, in a meta where people are playing as a group and five people, it, does, it gets a lot of value. Kron gets the first kill, but then it just like falls apart. Really on the back of that fix a boop on the far way. Like, far way gets booped into the pit and then they just don't have the healing to sustain through the fight. So maybe a little bit too aggressive there from the charge. Railgun is not a projectile. No, Railgun is not a projectile. Overclock greater than Dragon, that is also a good point. Do you watch East or are you told what happens? I watch, uh, so in the morning when we talk about one East game each, in the morning we each watch a, an East game. Uh, obviously we can't wake up, watch three games of Overwatch with any form of meaningful analysis. Um, so we watch one and then we split it up. Zest getting low. They should be able to isolate Fury here. <clears throat> yeah, Fury goes down. That was a good play by the charge. Force off Zest. Oh, they're going to commit to it? That's a questionable commitment here by Philly. Oh, Jimmy. Heal Jimmy. Oh, God. Fix is running him down. They should be able to cap this though. That was pretty good, but that was a really good fight by the charge, right? Like they didn't use a single ultimate and they won that fight. That was just like good team, like f force out the, the rest of the team, isolate Fury, consolidate as a team. Like if you, Jimmy didn't die, it would have been better, but yeah. The primary fire is projectile. Yeah, so the, the primary fire is projectile and that's why uh, you, uh, you generally see Ash be played on like really long maps because the Ash, it can be very hard to charge a railgun up with the projectile of the Sojin. Beat. Oh, yeah, nice beat was good timing. Counters the blade. Philly rallied. Charge rallied around the same time that they beat it, which isn't great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, in a perfect world, you like rally as the beat is wearing off, um, but it can be hard to do that sometimes. Because like sometimes people will pop the rally and then like the Genji will pull the blade and the Brig wants, the Lucio wants to drop the beat to deal with the blade. Gongjo's record right now, I believe they're two and two. Oh, in the in the season, I'm not sure. All right, that might have been a little aggressive by Jimmy. He got good value out of that. Always kill fixer, but oh. Oh, 
Oh, Carpe just murders Xerneas. Uh, that was that was in part of with Zest as well, so pretty bad that they like yeah losing Xerneas there is just kind of like a giving up a free loss, and that's a bad fight because for the charge you would have much preferred to, if they if they had to use the rampage or the overclock. The fact that they didn't have to use anything to win that fight, all of a sudden they have we're getting close to one fight territory. You have no defensive ultimates, and Fury has the rampage. Like rampage is with no defensive ultimates is almost like a guaranteed win unless the Junker Queen fucks it up. Xerneas gets picked first a lot, yeah. How you feel about the current set of Sojin? I think Sojin's in a good spot. I think she's fun. I think she is the new hero, so I think it's fine if she's a little overbalanced compared to some of these other heroes, but I actually kind of like where it is. Uh, that might be a little early by Carpe here as well. Yeah, like, Charge can just disengage from that. The percentage isn't high enough that they're going to be forced into a bad spot. <sighs> Ooh, that was close though. This is not gonna. This is gonna be on choice of one blade and Furies. Oh, they are grouping up for that. It's, oh wow, they very almost didn't touch, but it didn't. Yeah, and and that goes back to what I was talking about, right? Where Carpe has the over, is able to keep the overclock, forces them back with that one, and then they have to re-engage into a rampage, and they don't have their defensive ultimates. So, I think some. So they lost the first fight and that other fight on just this sanctum too easily like they it wasn't costing Philly anything to to win those fights and in like a such a ultimate heavy meta you really can't be making those kind of mistakes and that's why first picks are a big deal I feel like Zest would be in the conversation with the likes of Proper and Kevster, not for MVP. Like, I think Rookie of the Year, absolutely, if Philly was more consistent. So we're gonna have Zest Farah on this point. And I actually like the Farah here because like, let's actually look at this from Jimmy Pob. This is why Farah is pretty good against Sojin. Farah is actually quite bad about against Ash in my opinion, unless the Farah can get in your face. But here's why Sojin's not very good. Like, it, it's so hard to charge a rail up against the Farah. If you do get a rail gun, it's, it's a pretty good shot. I actually don't like where Jimmy is standing either. I think he is way too in the open. Like, he doesn't have anything to hide behind if he gets pressured like that. That was a, that was a good kill into Zest, though. I think Zest got way too low. I, I, th I think the charge have looked a lot better since they've just been full committing to Krong. They have choice of one Jimmy. They have a Pritter if they need him. And um, I, th I think Xerneas has been a lot better than uh, Unique. This year. Even if he has been dying first, like Xerneas actually has impact in the game. And that was my biggest problem with Unique is that like Unique wasn't playing flawlessly and he was getting picked, but he also just wasn't having impact in the way that like Xerneas, like he gets ends up in the kill feed. He has some aggression, right? He's offering something to his team. So Zest ends up switching, switching back to the Genji. Um, you, you've seen a lot of DPS players doing that in the first fight of like playing something unique because of the new DPS passive where you get you can retain 30% of your uh, ultimate charge. Update score, oh, thank you. Fascinating how long Jimmy holds his rail. I actually really like the way that Jimmy holds his rail charge. Like he's, you're just waiting for that one big shot, right? And like he's st like you'll see him when he goes to take the shot, he holds it for a while. Like he's and he like stands still, and then he takes that shot. And that's how you have to play Sojin. Sojin is essentially like a, a mid range widowmaker, right? Where you're pl you're really playing for that one big pick. There's like a little bit of consistent damage with the left click and the orb, but. Oh, this is a little late of an overclock. That was not a great overclock by uh, Jimmy. Seems like Kai style, yeah. So Kai plays a very similar style. I, I, I know what you mean. How did Farway die at the at the start of that fight? I think he just went too far. I think they went aggressive, right? And Farway got punished. Yeah, they ra they rallied in. He he needed to slow down. Like, I, you see a lot of uh, Briggs do this, where like so they they think because they've rallied that they're indestructible. But he like think about it. he rallies. 
and he doesn't have much overhealth and look how much damage he's taken like he doesn't have his shield up he's not running anything and here's the thing he got low if he had just chilled here put up his shield but he then puts up the shield and bashes in and then he just gets hit by fury's axe and dies like that, that was just greedy play by far away like you just just getting a little over ambitious and thinking you're a little bit more indestructible than you really are Bro, are you gonna spam DPS Doomfist before you change forever? Nah, that Doomfist is, uh, is is not my vibe. I'm a support player. I hate Doomfist. All me and my support homies hate Doomfist. <laughs> my Doomfist exists. Doesn't always work out yet, but it's never my fault. What do you think about Zest? I think Zest is an incredible player. I think if he has a really good team around him and he can get some like coaching into just like holding off his aggression a little bit from time to time, I think he'd be like, he, he I think he's, he's one of those generational players, right? Like, you know how like we're at the like the pinnacle right now where there's that new wave of players coming through? Like the young players and a lot of the old players are being pushed out. Zest is a part of that. Like I expect Zest to be a part of this league for the next few years at least, right? You know, I was thinking about playing Overwatch 1 again recently. I was like, you know, on stream when I get some time, maybe I should play some Overwatch 1. But <laughs> I feel like that's going to go away so quickly after I play it. So I don't know. What? I don't know. I just, I'm just so excited for Overwatch 2. I just like, oh, I should like practice my mechanics and like play the game again before it comes out, you know, so that I'm ready. What, Krong? Did he just solo old fury? Oh no, he went upwards. Wow, I'm actually surprised that hit two people. The uh, the Junker Queen hitbox is really interesting on the rampage. Oh wow, Jimmy just got hard targeted by Fury. Fury knows who the carry is. Yeah, I, I don't really understand the Junker Queen hitbox and how it works. Um, oh, that's a big axe. Hey guys, why are we fighting in old spawn? It feels like it's bigger in front of her than it looks. And I also think booping it makes the hit reg very interesting. So choice of one's gonna try and carry this. They get the beat out and they rally. I think they need to rally earlier. Like, I think Farway needs to rally earlier to get catch up and stuff like that and get it running. I feel like Farway's rally is once again, just that little bit too early. So, sorry, late. So by the time the rally is even gaining effectiveness, they've already lost the fight. Like that's another bad rally in my opinion by uh by Farway. I think there should be more of an indicator that you're like you got hit by it. Maybe. Or like or like the look of the the spinning. I agree. Like I I think the junk queen ult needs a little bit of uh a little bit of adjustments, but All right, I, I, whoa, that was aggressive, but hey, it worked. Oh, let's go, Jimmy. That, yeah, that was, that was Jimmyable. Jimmy cooks. Jimmy's cooking it up. Peak fucking. This is what peak alpha male looks like, chat. Ugh, late beat by Xanius. Good ult by, uh, by Fury. Yeah, this fight's over, Jimmy. Time to get out. Oh, okay. They should get another fight at least. You cannot die here, choice of one. No, you're good.
Alright, Jimmy, I, I need you to do some fucking. Oh my! Dude, Jimmy is no respect for the Philadelphia Fusion. Jimmy is just aggressive. He meant to do it. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, let's be honest. If he had killed Carpe, it would have been sick. Instead, he just turbo entered. But they were probably going to lose that fight anyway, so I don't, I don't hate the play. Right, like, here's why I don't hate the play. If he just lets Carpe sit back and shoot the railgun, the chances are that they're going to lose anyway. So, you know, sometimes you just got to make a play. Like, it's better than him just, like, sitting in the back doing nothing and then watching his team just get murdered. Oh, fixer. Well, I don't really like just running to the point here, but it kind of worked. I don't know how they all got through so easily. Zest on the Echo. Chat, what do you think of the Echo? What are your thoughts? Oh, thoughts on the Echo over the Genji? Because we saw more of it this weekend than we have in the past. Oh, that's a good kill. Oh, Jesus, Jimmy. Bad, bad, decent, no thanks. Has it ever worked? Not consistently. I Okay, I like the Echo if someone tries to play Farrah. Like, you know, like, the Dallas Fuel match that we just watched recently with Florida Mayhem? I think if someone tries to play Farrah with you, you just switch your Genji to Echo, and I think you just win. But I don't like it against this Genji. I think the damage is too inconsistent. In the same way of, like, a Farrah that, like, yeah, if someone gets below half health, you can beam them and kill them, right? Like, the Junker Queen, it's like, well, what do you do to stop them from just running over your team, right? Genji has so much like dash reset and execute potential, it feels like, from nothing, that I feel like it's just better. Junk Queen dupe? Yeah, the dupe is good. I don't know. I just, I feel like it's hard to get consistent value out of the Echo. I also think she's very susceptible to dying in that way, right? Like, is she, she either does no damage or she's susceptible to dying. There's no middle ground. Good beat. Good counter beat. And got both rallies come at the same time. Is Farway going to live through a rally? Wow, Farway actually did a great job of living through that. That was actually really well played. The, the, the fusion really tried to kill them. Nice blade by Choi. Junker Queen copy is overrated. Yeah, I actually think Junker Queen copy is overrated. I think having the shout is good, but I think I would much rather you copy the Sojin. Because I think it's very easy to get Sojourn ult. And you get the Disruptive Field. Also, if you can copy a Genji, a Genji, Genji is a good shout as well. Why not copy the Brig? Brig has suffers from the same thing of like, if you don't hit the whip shot off the bat, it can be quite difficult to get ultimate. Keep it moving. Wow. Dude, Fury just went to the fucking moon. Which character do you think is the least important in this comp? Ah, uh, the Lucio. I think the Lucio matters the least. He's obviously still important for the, the speed boost and that kind of stuff, but your Lucio doesn't need to be doing crazy damage or making crazy plays. Like, it obviously helps, but it's nowhere near as important as having a good Genji, a good Sojourn, a good Junker Queen. And I think Brig is very punishing. If you have a bad Brig, it punishes you a lot. Why Echo over Farah? I think Farah is too inconsistent in terms of damage. Like, Farah is great if they're standing up as five and doing that kind of stuff. But, like, if, if you play a Farah, you just run over the rest of the team. And it kind of becomes like a clock of, can the Farah kill your team before you kill the rest of their team? Zess has to switch. Yeah, Zess actually just switched back to Echo just for that spawn hold and then switched back to Genji. So I don't really like the way that Zess is swapping around right now. Checkmate hit so many directs. Yeah, but as I said, I, I think it's going to have pretty middling success. And people, it's only going to take people a little bit to work out how to deal with it, right? Oh, that was a nasty shot, actually. 
Jimmy, stop it! What about Zaya against Junk Queen? Didn't harm and switch at one point. That's because he knew he wasn't gonna get old. I don't like it. He, like obviously he went crazy on the Zaya, but I think what would happen is if you tried to play it consistently, what would happen is as soon as Zaya used bubbles, she just dies. Like she just doesn't have any protection after she uses her bubbles. I think she would probably get run over. And if you just don't get energy, you're completely useless in this meta because of how much healing exists. Yuri is very aggressive. That was way too many ultimates. Oh wait, actually I thought Jimmy ulted. Oh, yeah, it's actually not awful because they rallied as well. Why did, well, am I crazy? It looked like Jimmy ulted. Maybe just because of the blue of the gun, I thought it was ulted. He ulted, you know what I mean? How about that bat brig of mayhem? Isn't that just better against anything because of immo against rampage and that kind of stuff? Uh, no. Immortality field of keeping you alive for another two seconds doesn't solve anything. You're still just probably gonna die. Immortality field is, is incredibly useless in this meta. And Bap's biggest thing is that he can heal, like, Oh yeah, it, it's just not good. It, it, I just think Baptiste is an awful character and I don't it, like in this meta and I don't think that Florida should play them. The only time I actually liked that Bap swap was when they only had a minute left on Hollywood because Baptiste is a hero that you are guaranteed to get an ultimate in one minute. Like you're gonna get that shit so fast and that's how they use it and that's how it worked, right? But then they tried to play it on like New Queen Street and I wasn't in love with it. Oh, that was almost a C9. Whoa, dude, Jimmy's a psycho. He. Yeah, I don't know, Jimmy, I think you deserve to die for that one. That one was a little, that one was a little greedy. He just slid into an ult in Genji. Are we gonna watch that Florida game? Uh, maybe on Thursday, we'll see. Um... Would Moya have any place in this meta? No. So like, you gotta think about it in the way that the, the things that the heroes do, right? Brig does crazy AoE healing and Rally is really good against Junker Queen because of the overhealth, Rally's just a good ultimate and everyone's playing as five. So Brig does a crazy amount of healing. You have the whip shots, you can push people around, all that kind of stuff. Lucio is needed for the speed boost, also the AoE healing and that kind of stuff. If you play Moira, what are you dropping? You can't drop the Lucio because you need the speed boost. So you'd be playing Lucio Moira. Rally is infinitely better than... Moira, Moira's Coalescence in this, uh, in this match because uh, first of all, if you are coalescing and you get hit by a Rampage, you just die. Like you just die. You don't have any way to get out of Coalescence. If you just, if people would just wait until you Coalescence and then you would ult them um, and you would just die. And follow up, uh, how do you heal your Genji as a Moira? Uh, Lucio Moira, how do you heal your Genji or your Sojin if they're playing far away? Briggs' ability to throw packs from distance and heal individual people from distance and people getting run down is very valuable. You don't need tons of AoE, more AoE healing that exists that, you know, you already have. It's all because of Junker Queen. I just don't think Moira has, offers a lot other than healing as well. There's no, no, there's no Necrotic Orb in our patch. They're playing on the uh, reverted Moira. Okay, Jimmy, time to go crazy, baby. Oh, okay. Good beat. Oh, Jimmy? Oh, wow. Jimmy actually kind of owned that. We need a montage of all the Ajaxes. There's been a lot of Ajaxes this stage.
ready for battle. Five. Four. Is that Necrotic Orbit thing again? No, 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 it all got removed. One. But someone was asking if it, did, it existed. Is the playoffs going to have a new support hero? I would assume that the playoffs is going to have a new support hero. Because uh, the game will be out by... Because the the game releases with the new support hero, as far as we're aware, and we would have guessed, um, with... Um, in the middle of Countdown Cup. So there, there'd be a couple of weeks before the playoffs, so you would assume it would be in the, uh, the playoffs. How do they die? Like, how, how does this just happen? Like, how are they able to just walk up? Like, I, I don't like the positioning of, like, why is everyone on the low ground? Like, everyone's just chilling on the low ground. And they just kill Krong. Like, I don't know. That felt a little too easy for, uh, for Philly. Yay, 2019 playoffs moment. It's just the way it is, right? It's not that it's by no means the worst thing that exists in this playoffs. But it's not great, obviously. Um, but it's like, what are you going to do? Not play with the new hero for the playoffs when we're launching a new game? Oh, Carpe. Dude, that was actually such a troll by Carpe. That was actually such a troll. Like, what was he doing there? Oh, Can we see any new teams? No, absolutely not. Like, we have, we have teams that don't even want to exist in the league anymore, like the Los Angeles Valley. There's no way we're going to get more teams. I would rather see them reduce the number of teams. Could see, oh yeah, well maybe new ownership for teams, that'd be cool. But I don't know who's trying to buy an Overwatch League team these days. Zest gets crong. Oh, yeah, and like that's the stuff that I talk about with like Zest, where I say like he massively overextends. Like that was another overextension. Jimmy needs to stop sliding into the opposition. In his defense, he did get booped, and that was very unfortunate, but it, it's just kind of funny. They probably would have... They might have won that round if he had not messed that up, but... You know, it happens. It happens. Score. Three to four. Switching sides. Talk trash about my man Jimmy? No, no, it's not talking trash. Just uh, friendly advice that maybe not dashing in. You know when I said fixers being solid, my bad, yeah. I'm not playing any Apex today, Jack. Let's get that one more time for a different angle. I, I just thought it was breezed over it because we highlighted on the out broadcast like a lot. Uh, I've seen I've seen that clip like 19 million times from 20 different angles. Um, but yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Invenian, that that don't be ridiculous. Jimmy is a great player who smells delicious. So uh, let's just calm down a little bit. Yo, he just used the pull of the dagger to get on the bus. Jimmy moment. Oh, choice of one down. Jimmy is getting kills, team. Where, what are you doing? Jimmy Slander in this chat, I know. You're on thin ice, guys. Jimmy, you need to do some damage. Oh, ooh. Nice. Good shot by Krong. Oh, that was a big axe by Fury. 
Oh, team. Dude, Jimmy's team is trolling. Jimmy is trying his best to carry and everyone else is just throwing. Victory. Oh, damn. Did Fury just teabag Jimmy? That's it. Fury's dead to me. What in the world is GOATS? If you don't know what GOATS is, don't worry about it. You know, it's probably for the best. Yeah, you're living in a better place than most of us. This is where Jimmy comes alive, dude. Jimmy's about to fuck. So, you know, Philadelphia Fusion go up 2-0 over the Guangzhou charge. Oh man, you know, Guangzhou's gonna lose this. How, how is this gonna happen? How would Jimmy allow this to happen? Don't worry. Jimmy doesn't. Carpe, welcome to Frowny Town. Dude, you know, we always talk about how hard it must be to be a Houston fan. Being a Philly fan, whew, man, that shit's gonna suck. Ovely would have a word with you? What? Why do you think Ovely hasn't come back? She, she's just burnt by the Philadelphia Fusion experience. Oh! Later, nerd. Five years of disappointment. Just never-ending cycle of disappointment. Oh! Later, Carpe! Later, nerds! We can't even trust Philly to be first in being the worst. They're second worst team in APAC. <laughs> Dude, they can't win anything. Not even at sucking. That's 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 brutal, man. You know, it, you gotta feel for the, Philly. Going to sleep. As a fusion fan expecting the sweep over the charge. No. <laughs> Just stay asleep at that point, honestly. Choice of one's feeding. J Jimmy, I need you to compensate. Oh, that was close. Dude, Fix has got to be careful. Good beat. That was a good counter beat. Good rally. Good ultimates by the charge. That was a better later thing. Jimmy need, uh, Jimmy actually has to fuck to win this fight. Choice of one as well. Nice. That was a pretty good play by Jimmy. How did Philly kill nothing? They had much better defensive ultimates there. Oh my god, they almost see nine. How is nobody dying? All right, we're good. Is Jimmy best sojourn in APAC? No. Fits and lips still exist. Let's just calm down. I like Jimmy. Here's the thing about Jimmy. I don't think Jimmy has as many crazy, crazy pop off moments, right? Jimmy gets in, especially in this match, he gets a lot of really good first picks. Like he really does, but he is not putting up like, oh yeah, shy. Sorry, I forgot about shy. Um, I forgot about like, you know, like you, we haven't seen Jimmy have like a shy level of performance or a lip level of performance, right? Where they just, they literally get like a ridiculous number of final blows to deaths. Like even in this series, like if you look at the stat card, Jimmy was like 44 final blows, 33 deaths, which is good, but it's not bonkers, right? Silence Jimmy hater. It's not hating. You gotta be realistic. We we gotta we gotta keep pushing Jimmy to be better. We gotta keep pushing Jimmy to not ex not become complacent, to not become accepting of his position. Good old by Kronk. Oh yeah, Leave has been going crazy in this stage as well. I didn't even think about that. Like Victory is in sight. But don't get caught. How can we sit for Jimmy if we can't acknowledge where he can grow? Exactly. Exactly. Gotta keep him on the grind set. Gotta get Jimmy back into the fucking... The time chamber. Whatever the fuck it's called in Dragon Ball Z.
Jimmy, we need a kill. Oh, Fury hits Krong with that one. Gets Krong down. They just, they're so close to their support ults, but just not close enough. If they got their support ults up, they could have won that fight, but they just didn't have anything left in the tank. You can have that one, Philly. We didn't want it. Sorry, I'm on the wrong pub. That was, that was really well played by Zest. Gets in, forces the beat, gets out. You see a lot of Genjis just get punished for free doing that kind of stuff. Did Jimmy change his name to Zest and get traded? Yes. Any bonkers? Oh, Garpy's won! Choice one punishes. That, that, that kill by Choice one set up by Jimmy. I miss Jerry. I wonder what Jerry's doing with himself these days. Is Jerry back in like contenders? Does anyone know? What happened to Jerry? A good field. Oh, this is one. This ends now. Oh, that was unfortunate. Oh, he got he got the beat out. Oh. We gotta unbind Jimmy's shift key. Honestly, we gotta unbind it. It it, it really is the only thing holding Jimmy back. That was just unlucky. <laughs> what? what? Jimmy, no, Jimmy, 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 no, Jimmy, stop it. Oh, that was a nut stagger. I don't want to say that might have been Jimmy's fault, but I don't think the Widow was the switch. That's my boy. <laughs> Tilt swap Widow. My God, that was actually brutal. I wish that I wish the slowdown was still existed. No. Oh, that was a nice shot. It's the minus key. No, it doesn't work. I like I I, I put it on my scroll wheel. I like I've tried changing the button. It doesn't work. Unless I'm just stupid and it's like bugged and there's a way to adjust it, but I haven't been able to make it, make it work with a button. Cause I used to do it all the time. What's Philly doing? Just kind of wait and doing nothing. All right, just one down. All right, Krong ults Fury. I don't love it. Yeah, I feel like they didn't get any isolation with that. Oh, nice. He lived long enough. Oh, wow. He actually did a great job. They might lose this fight, but they... that was This is an expensive fight. Choi, don't do it. Cuss, remember when you single-handedly ended Jimmy's career last year? 
What do you mean? What did I do that? Choice of one, I need you to offer something. Uh, okay, see not. Score zero. Cast a railroad Jimmy into the ground. What do you mean? Did we we all watched the same game last time we watched Jimmy on Dor Dorado? I didn't end his career. He ended his own career when he decided to triple flank on Widowmaker in the same fight on Dorado. I was just highlighting. I was just a witness, okay? You cannot blame that on me. Timu is going for the percentage plays. That is never the percentage play. Widow flank sometimes pays off. When it doesn't pay off three times in a row though, I think it's time to start asking questions though. That's destroying everyone else's careers just like he destroyed his own. <laughs> Damn, down bad. Who's the best player you've ever played with? Uh, for the time, Effect. Effect was incredible at the time. Is he doing Apex now? Yeah, I believe so. Soon greater than effect IMO? Well, that's just factually incorrect. If we're talking about mechanical skill and like for the gen for the thing, Soon's a great player because he's just very smart. But if, like, if we're talking like mechanically the best player I ever played with, like, and just like the player that impressed me the most is definitely effect. He was just on a different level at, in 2018. his mental health yeah. yeah obviously there's a lot of things going on there but we're not really talking about that all right i charge this has been a lot of nothing oh you're like also on oh damn should have looked up it's a nice shot. Dude. Man trying to end Carpe's career? Yeah, I'll do. It's, a, it's the cycle. I tried to end Jimmy's career. Jimmy's trying to end Carpe's career, right? It's, it's, it's the, the circle of suck. Also, okay, so let me add some context to the people who are, like, to this video. This is the clip that made me mold out of control. This is why Jimmy exists, okay? This is why, this is why this happened. Take the high ground. Just take the high ground. What is wrong with- For more context, this is the third time in a row that he does the exact same thing. I'm gonna fucking lose it, dude. I'm actually gonna lose it. It's funny because it's Carpe as well. No, 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 That is the context of what happened. And that was it, was, it was a long run of, it was a long run of plays. Cause Chad has been trying to tell me that Jimmy fucked for years. People have been trying to tell me that Jimmy has been at the, our Lord and savior on Hitscan. And it's just never come to be until now. It was simply unlucky. <laughs> 
He really should have hit that. There's a, there's a lot of things he should have done in that situation. What was he cooking? On land he hits those? Right, I'm, I'm hearing a bunch of back backpedal barries right now in, in my chat. Just like the last couple of years when everyone's backpedaled when they're like, dude, Jimmy was so good in this match. And then I would watch an entire match from Jimmy Pub and he wouldn't do anything. But now, it's fine. I just stopped listening to chat and just started to use my own two eyeballs. And I've, oh, okay, well, not not in this moment. But I use my own two eyeballs to witness the, the fucking of Jimmy. Oh, that was a interesting blade by choice of one. But that was a lot of bolts by Phil 8. What was that? Beat Rampage... Overclock? You take those. Did you keep on battling his shift? He couldn't escape. My bad, guys. My bad. Oh, I would have taken that rail shot. Jimmy literally doesn't shoot unless he has 100 energy. Like, he literally just refuses to shoot until he has 100 energy. And honestly, I don't hate it. But there are definitely times where he could hit someone with like an 80 charge and it would kill someone. Oh, Jimmy. Save Jimmy, save the world! That was a good ult by Krong, though. Dude, I can't believe... Do you guys see the whole team bait Jimmy like that? That was crazy. So point unproven. Does uh, Sojourn still get rail charge from damage? I think you still get rail. I think you do, but it charges so fast. It's very unnoticeable. Is APAC going to Toronto? No, I believe they're playing an online tournament. I don't think they're traveling at all. Yeah, I believe China is still in COVID issues. I'm not exactly sure where it is right now, but I know it's all, I know their tournament is all going to be online. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Dude, Jimmy is fucking lost. Nice. Will the playoffs be okay in LAN? As far as I'm aware, everything should be good for LAN and hopefully we can get everyone in the same place. Um, but we haven't heard anything about it yet. Shit's above my pay grade. I'm just here to talk about the fuckinging of Jimmy. That's what they pay me the big bucks for. Oh, he's dead. Jimmy, please, my career. Just because, just because I ended your career a year ago doesn't mean you need to end my career. Besides Seoul and Shanghai, what other teams in APAC do you think will make the tournament? If I was making a list right now of the four teams I think will make the tournament in APAC, it's Seoul Shanghai, obviously, and then it's going to be Chengdu and Charge. Just because Jimmy's going to carry them across the line. There's a world in which, like, Spark step it up and make it. I think less so for Philly. But yeah. Before Jimmy joined Charge, they had one win. Since he joined, they have three. For the, these reasons, Jimmy must be MVP since no other player single-handedly triples his team's win. Well, I don't know if that's technically true. Couldn't you say that, like... Couldn't you say that Mira is the best player It should deserve MVP because Ch Titans had zero wins until Mira joined the team, and now they have... Lots of wins. You're right, Mir is the goat. Okay, I'm glad we've all agreed that Mir is the goat. Oh, that is a good ult by Fury. Good counter beat. Far away, don't die challenge.
clean by the charge. Charge goes up. One map score it goes to two and one. Clean map by Jimmy, getting lots of picks. Over to New Queen Street. Ready for battle. I think nerf to Rampage would be a good nerf. I think you reduce the... I think the you don't change anything about the ultimate other than the anti-heal shouldn't last as long as it does. I think it should only last like three seconds. Kind of like antibiotic nade. And I think it would be fine still. Like, I think it still does a lot of damage. The bleed's still really good. The healing it provides. The range? I think the range is... They've already nerfed the range, and it feels like it isn't as oppressive as it used to be. And then I think you nerf the, sh the, the shout of Junker Queen so that it doesn't give overhealth. I don't know how you would change it outside of that, but the overhealth is really the big problem. Oh. Did you just shoot the pole? I don't know. I never expected Jimmy to branch a Pritta. Well, either did I, right? Like, when Jimmy and a Pritta got signed to the charge, I was like, yeah, Jimmy. Oh, he's going to get benched by a Pritta. But he was better than him in contenders, a uh, Pritta in contenders, and he's been performing well for the charge. So, can't argue with the results. Inbound with cargo. Will this replay viewer become public with Overwatch 2 at some point? I would not expect it to be available for the Overwatch League this year, but I would expect it to be back for next year. But I have no official standing on that, right? Like, I'm just speaking out my ass. But uh, as I said, the, the Overwatch League... Wow, let's go, Jimmy. The Overwatch League replay viewer, it works. It's just very buggy. And it's definitely not polished uh, or works flawlessly. Can you show us some sh Jimmy stats? Yeah, I'll, I can show you the MVP stats after the uh, after it. Do we know if I'll be back next year? We haven't heard anything about it. As far as I'm aware, everything's coming back next year. I sure fucking hope so because it's my job. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like if the league was going to crumble, we would have started hearing more rumors about it, right? Like, I feel like we would there would be some rumblings that shit's going bad. But as I said, that's just that's way over my head. Would you have Shout heal for X? Yeah, I, I think I would want Shout to like not provide overhealth and maybe give health if you're missing it. But like, I don't know. Even that's a dangerous game to play. I, I just don't really know how to balance it perfectly. Like, what, what about this? What if the Shout gave 75 health over like four seconds or something like that in the same way that she recovers from bleeds, right? So it sort of stays law wise it makes sense, but like she's providing it to people around her. It doesn't give over health, but it will heal in a dot-like fashion. Just like, kind of like BAP, yeah, like BAP shift. If, that, if they want to keep it giving like some form of like health support. But I, I think that the big issue is that it provides over health. Oh, they just gave charge the cap. That is 100% worth it for Jimmy. They got the cap for his overclock, even though he died. 100% worth. Would damage reduction be too OP? Damage reduction is a very dangerous thing to give. I think it'd be cool to get tied the AoE healing to her own regen. Yeah, like, that's an interesting idea. What if she provided AoE healing perfect, like, during the commanding shout, she, the healing that she does to herself, she also does equivalent amount of healing to people around you. So you would rampage, and then you could shout, and you could provide crazy AoE healing, but only under the guise that you had done a lot of damage, right? Same thing, if, like, you hit a fat axe, and then you shift, so you commanding shout, and you provide that healing to your team, like, so there's a skill aspect there. Like, that sounds kind of interesting, right? Like, yeah, it provides, like, it all of a sudden, it becomes, like, a mechanical thing, rather than just you press the button and everyone gets a ton of over, over health and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, like, I agree with you, uh, Tupola. Like, 
it, the biggest issue is that anything is better than overhealth. Like we we learn our lesson from Brig, or well, we should be learning our lesson from Brig that providing instant temporary health is just a problem because it makes you very oppressive in a group team fight and it just takes over the game. Sounds broken at high tiers. Well, you could balance how much healing can be provided and stuff like that, right? Because like Junker Queen doesn't heal herself for that much, right? Like she really doesn't heal herself for that much. Like if you like when you played her, if you looked at her stats, like she really was like she'd get to the end of a match and she's healed herself for like what a thousand health. Like that's really not much. I just think overhealth needs more counters. I don't think overhealth needs counters. I think overhealth just needs to not exist. They should stop giving characters. It's not even. It's not even overhealth. It's team based overhealth. That is the big problem in my opinion. You can't be give overhealth to everyone. Also, this this rampage by Fury is kind of a troll. He's in like a 1v3 and I don't, like he hits three and I think Xerneas dies for this, but like, and then like choice of one kind of, so it, like they kind of go even in the fight because of it, but I don't, I don't think it's worth it. Like it's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't think it's worth it. Like you don't really win that fight because all of a sudden these guys are coming back. They did clean up Jimmy and choice of one, so. Maybe they won the fight. Like they did get pushed for it. They did win that fight. They did get progress and they still have positioning and they're resetting. So it's not the worst thing for sure. What parts such parts of Jungle Queen will be changed? No idea. They, are, they haven't told us about the nerfs yet. Choice one blade. Uh, a little aggressive there. The classic Jimmy run by. <laughs> Dude, the Jimmy slides are just aggressive. Jimmy is too talented for you to understand. <laughs> yeah, true. Maybe I just don't get it. Good axe. This is probably the most annoying bug, and I think this is the first time this has ever happened uh, in a thing. And this is why double beat. Um, sorry, my uh, the game crashed. If you've noticed it, when you're observing, if there is a double beat, the observers will crash. The same thing exists in the replay viewer that exists for the observers when they're watching the game. And that's why you see a lot of crashing happening from the, uh, from the observers this uh, stage. Ready for battle. Uh, where were we at? How does a bug even occur? It's happened in the past. It's actually been something that has existed in the past. Uh, is this where we were? No, we're not that far through. Um, it's actually existed in the past. Like back in like 2017, it's something about the interactions. Uh, so I think it's around here. So yeah, okay. So the, the charge won that fight. I think this is where we were. Charge won the fight. We can't watch again because it'll crash. Wait, is that why the stream keeps freezing and observers leave? Yes. So for context, that's why like you like in the middle of the fight, you'll see like a one of the streams crack like freeze, then they cut away from it and you see observers leaving. It is literally for that bug. You will 100% be able to track when it happens because it almost exclusively happens when two sound barriers hit the ground very close to each other. Shout out to OBS Sojourn. We hope you're doing okay. <laughs> Good to know, yeah. So it's it's obviously just an important, unfortunate thing with the build. It's a beta build. It's kind of, it, they can't really short-term fix it. Hopefully it should be fixed by uh, Countdown Cup when they add that new patch in. Oh. The, the most important thing is it doesn't crash the players. That'd be a big problem if it crashed the players.
Why does it only crash one over here? Obs and not all of them? No idea. It's probably the way that like you're like the way it's they're interacting. Like maybe if you're watching a Lucio or if you're looking at the Lucio. As I said, I'm not I'm not a I'm not an engineer, I'm not a software designer, I can't tell you. You might say those two Lucios are really breaking the sound barrier with their ultimate. Also, this was such a troll. Okay, charge should have finished it. Look how many ults they have. Someone tell me why Farway doesn't rally here. Like, just press the button as soon as you get it. Press it, 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 press it. And Krong, like... If he just rallied, they probably would have been fine. They would have had sound barrier. They would, everything would have been good. Like, there's no reason to not hold it there. You know they're going to have to come into you because you have... You're about to push it into the point. He would have died there anyways, I'm sure. Probably not. He was close to the cutoff, right? Like... And it doesn't change. Like, he didn't know he was going to get railed there, right? Like... Good ult by Fury. There goes Sound Barrier from Xerneas to cover it. Choice of one blades. That, that was really well played. Like, I guess the charge had so many ultimates there, right? Like they, they had both support ults. It's pretty hard to lose with both support ults, but that was a really bad fight for Philly. They needed to win that fight, right? Like they needed to win that fight using very minimal ults because then they could have won with the blade beat in the next one. But now it's like the minute and a half, they're at a 123. Like it's so hard to come back at this point. And this is the problem with like push. I would say one of the biggest issues with the push right now is that uh, if one team gets this far in the game and the other team doesn't have the checkpoint, it is almost impossible to catch up. And they shouldn't be able to catch up because charge has been dominant throughout this entire round. Just kind of a weird situation that you ha have to play out the match. Now Fixer holds the beat until the last... I actually think I remember uh, them talking about this as it was happening. How does the checkpoint work? Uh, if you hit the checkpoint, your spawns move forward. That's not really a big deal as much as it is like once you hit the checkpoint, your bot will be able to move past it quickly next time. That was a good live. That was a good... Oh, never mind. That was a pretty good sol uh, live by Jimmy. Uh, but he did end up going down still anyway. Maybe make a mercy rule? Nah, it's fine. But yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world to play now. It, as I said, it's still... Even though push has its issues and I'm not a big fan of Coliseo and the map layout of Coliseo, it's still a million times better. A, a gajillion times better than 2CP. There we go. All right, two, two, map five. Dude, this there is some trolls in this round from the from the fusion. The better team wins in push. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I genuinely think like it's a very balanced game mode. It pushes a very balanced game mode. But as I said, I haven't played it at the highest level. I'm looking forward to like getting my hands on ranked and Overwatch two and like. Feeling like I get a better understanding of like the competition side of it because like obviously we can make assumptions But you don't really know until you play it yourself Oh, Jimmy kind of trolled that Yeah, time to go, Kron 
What is the problems you see with push? Um, some of the, like, primarily on Colosseo is that it becomes, like, the objective is not always to push the bot. Is, I think, a big issue with push is that, like, sometimes the best thing for you to do is not to push it. Uh, and to take a fight on a better position. And I think that is bad for the game. Oh, Zest got pushed. He got whipped into a dagger. Oh, that was actually unfortunate for Zest. Um, and then I think the the way that the high grounds work on Colosseo is just really bad for the way that the game mode plays out. I also think spawns are a little funky from time to time. Like some teams have like way too much of an advantage in certain situations. Vixie gets Choi. Nice by Jimmy. That's a good disruptive field. Oh, get Zest. That was an important kill on Zest. Uh, I don't really like this play. That was kind of bad by charge. They kind of like zug zug. They kind of, they were doing, they were in such a good advantage and they just sort of turned off their brain and chased after that low HP target. And then Fury just shouts and they just die. Sounds like a problem with Colosseo map design and then a push as a mode. Well, it's, yeah, and that's it. Like, I actually think New Queen Street is a good map. Like, from my experience and the fun that I had there, I actually kind of like New Queen Street. I do not like Colosseo. Zest goes down again. How does Zest go down again? Oh, dude, he just got fucking executed. That was a good play by Choice of One and Xerneas. And that goes back to what I was saying about Xerneas and like what Xerneas offers in comparison. This is a bad fight for Philly. Like, that was a good ult by Fury, but no one was there to follow up. Um, like Xerneas just has more impact. Ooh, careful good. Look at how split they are. Like, what are we doing here? Like Philly is just super sp uh, split. They used, they used Rampage and Rally, not as a unit. Completely gave up the point and then they just have a rally disadvantage. So they're gonna lose this fight as well Like that was actually such bad ultimate usage by the Philly So then they're gonna beat engage which you're never gonna weed in a beating win in a beat engage in that situation Because as you saw Xerneas just mirrors it like you and I think the gladiators are the team that I think are the the most at fault from this from what I watched is they like they beat engage which is great if you know that they don't have an answer to your beat engage. But if you beat engage and they have like a beat or even a rally of their own or like a big ultimate to slow you down, like it's just nowhere near as good. Because if you beat engage, you need to win the fight in the next like two to three seconds or at least get a major advantage from it. By beat engaging, they're putting themselves in a bad position because charge can just counter beat engage like one to two seconds later and then they have an advantage. Um... So I don't, I don't really like the way that is used. Um, but as I said, the Gladiators are, I think, Funny Astro loves to beat Engage and they've done it a lot and it, I think it hurts them a lot. And that's why their macro seems to, I think, swing away from them from time to time because they use these beat Engages, they don't get enough value from it and then they just lose to big ultimates like Blades, like Rampages and that kind of stuff. And that's why it's like, well, why are the Gladiators losing? It doesn't feel like they should be losing. It's because like, it's hard to notice how bad a beat engage is and the adverse effects that it has when it comes to dealing with other ultimates. So they don't have the answers to other ultimates so it just feels like they're losing fights for free. Shock does tons of uh, beats engages. I haven't noticed that one as much uh, like they could have. I, I just noticed a lot of bad beat engages from the gladiators. As I said, I don't think beating gauges are bad. Don't get like, don't get my me wrong with that. I think there's just a time and a place for it. Okay, and as I said, that all went back to the way Philly lost that because they had that one really bad fight and their old cycle fell away from them very quickly. That's one of the hardest things that I've personally found analyzing this meta is that it's kind of hard to talk about that in like a like a macro sense of like, oh yeah, they fucked up this one ultimate, so therefore, uh, and this one team fight, so therefore they lost the round. Like that's, it's so hard to like give that in a short form analysis and like how it like, and make it interesting. It's one of the re hardest things to analyze about this meta. Oh, careful, Jimmy. Playing on the ledge. 
Never beat. No. <laughs> like, most teams... Like, uh, who was I watching recently? Uh, it was against... Maybe it was... Was it this match? No, I don't think it was this match. It was one of the matches I was watching. Re it might have been this match as well. Literally, they just beat every blade. They don't use sound barrier almost for anything other than feet, uh, than blade. And it just completely mitigates the value of the Genji because the Genji will never get b value from beat. Uh, sorry, Genji will never get value from blade. And it's not a bad thing. And then you just use rally to try and deal with rampages and mitigate the value of rampage. Like, and it can work. Um, like, obviously, you can't just play that kind of, um, what was the, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, flowchart overwatch. Like, you can't just, oh, Jimmy, you can't just play flowchart overwatch. Like, at the overwatch league and the highest level, you do need to be greeting. You need to be using it other things. You need to throw your opponents off guard. But it's not a bad way to, like, baseline. Atlanta? Was it the Atlanta match where speedily just felt like all of his blades were getting beated? I don't know. There's certain teams ju do just do that. They're just like, they just beat every sound barrier. Uh, beat every blade. Sound barrier. My brain. Oh, Junk Queen won. So I feel like get the control again and then just somehow lose out. Also, Kobe, thank you very much for the six-month uh, resub. Kasa, I thought you were the best analyst on the desk, but your preds have been sus recently. True. In my defense, this has been a sus stage, okay? So if anything, that proves that my analysis should be right. If nothing makes sense, then my preds should be wrong. So if you have good preds this stage, then your preds are sus. That's my daily dose of copium for you guys. Is he gaslighting us? <laughs> Am I being gaslit? I feel like I'm getting gaslit. <laughs> there you go. Hey, and I think it is, I think it was this match I was watching where it's, uh, like almost all of Zest Blaze just gets sound buried. Far away falls. The very first time predding the justice went well. Dude, I predded the justice. Bro, like, I predded the justice this week over Vancouver. Why? Why did I do that? Like, wait, wait, like, wait, wait, wait. Bro. I was so angry watching that final map. Like, and it wasn't even watching him playing awful. It's just like, Aspire went crazy. Like, in that final map. It was, it was brutal. Choice one, Blade. You guys ready for this? Da, 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 da. Okay, I also, I also want to talk about something as we watch Fury fly off the... Okay. Queen! <laughs> I want to talk about this, actually, as it happens. I don't really understand the hitbox of Junker Queen ult. Like, how does it not hit Choice of One or Krong? Like, I understand they're close behind, but I like it's enormous. And I feel like when it gets booped, the Junker Queen... I feel like the Junker Queen animation, like, is not clear. And it was particularly noticeable in the match yesterday with Atlanta. I feel like Hawk was getting robbed with Junker Queen ults with how many people was hitting. Like, he was, like, going through someone and just not hitting them with it. It's... I, I don't really understand it. And it's... I think it's because of its the way it's getting booped and moved around is not perfectly in line with how it works overall. But, yeah, it's just very strange. Oh. Oh, Jimmy? 
Big first pick onto Zess. Zess must have a lot of first deaths. That's actually a statistic I wish we had. I think we had it in the past, but it's kind of hard to like determine. I think this might have just been like a Captain Planet value thing. I really like that ult from uh, Krong, by the way. It is that like first deaths. It's hard to define first deaths because of the way team fights work in Overwatch, but if there was a thing for first deaths, I think that'd be a very important stat. Or first picks as well. Uh, it'd be an important stat. Should there be there? Should there be more in-game indicators and movement builds like Doomslayer? The problem ex exists. Oh, dude, this whip onto Aimgon's rally is enormous. By the way, let's watch this back. Um, if you add more indicators, it gets overwhelming. You're just giving too much information. Oh my god, the whip shot is so good onto the rally. They needed that rally so bad. Zest finally gets the blade. Rally goes out. And there it is. The Jimmy. Jimmyable has led us to victory. Guangzhou Charge complete the reverse sweep against the Philadelphia Fusion. The Fusion fans are crying. Ovali is crying. But Jimmy fans are rejoicing. The victory. We won. Big plays from the Guangzhou Charge. They actually look pretty solid. Like, they're not, as I said, the best team. They're, they're not the greatest that we have out there. But they're good. They're, they're, they're a good, solid team. Um, uh, and I think that they can qualify for the, uh, for the tournament. And I think they can do well. Do I think they can beat Seoul or Shanghai? Absolutely not. But that's not important. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, one second. I'm trying to get this up for you guys. Let's bring this up so we can... No. With this opposition that... Well, you can't really see it because of the graphic that's over it. But can you like close this? No. This is Jimmy's stats. Hero damage, 46K. Railgun kills, 33. Uh, eliminations, 123. Final blows, 43. You guys can't even see it. Final blows, 43. Deaths, 33. So he had a pretty good, uh, he had a pretty good run uh, throughout this match. He wasn't dominant you know it wasn't shy level of performance but his first picks and his his Thank opening much, picks money. and the value he got from that is the most important part so jimmy deservedly player of the match my hero um that's it for this one i hope you guys found it interesting thank you very much for watching i am going to be doing one match from the west we haven't 100 percent decided on which one yet but that'll be coming up in the next couple of days so make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel for more overwatch league action i appreciate you all and i will see you guys next time peace out